each individual sort of uh, survival or happy life depend on other. You will remain like Kasati, Siru Siru Sakasa. Rhinosaurs. Rhinosaurs. Oh, we are not like that. <laughs> Rhinosaurs, of course, firstly, very strong body. <laughs> so, many cases, except you say, I think, mate and mother and the child. Otherwise, you say, remain so lonely. So, in our classical text, no, there is mention of. No, uh, now. <laughs> there's a mention of. Main speaker now. There's a mention of the rhinoceros living um, by itself, I mean, by themselves, or alone. Oh, that's, I think, an exception. But we are not like that. Social animal. Even animal. Those social animal, they have uh, certain limited altruism, each other, taking care. That's very important. Affection, love. One, you see some scientists carry experiment. Two mice, both so the injur inj some injuries or injured, two mice. One mice with, with injury with another mice. One remain lonely, alone. Then the mice uh, with injury, but with another mice, you see constantly receiving licking from other mice. So the recover of the injury, that m mice who receiving constant affection from another mice is much quicker recover. So therefore, the affection, corona, is very, very important for health viewpoint. And we are social animal. Our life depend firstly your own family, and then your own community. Then finally, now today, we have to think humanity, because East depend West, West depend East, North depend South, South depend uh, North. That's today's reality, and global economy. So that's today's reality. Not like ancient time. Ancient time, okay. Even a small village, more or less self-sufficient. No need to bother about next village. Now today, heavily interdependent. And then global warming. Then also human population. When I first came to India, then we used to, we used to say six billion human beings. Now, seven billion human beings. Now, end of this century, human population may reach uh, 10 billion. And also, you see now, even today, seven billion, there are huge gap, rich and poor. So, millions of people remain because under poverty. 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 Even within one country like India, huge gap, rich and poor. I think how is the situation in Assam? I don't know. <laughs> I think the rich and poor gap. You see, this not only morally wrong, but practically source of problem. So we have to uplift the poorer section of the people. And in this country, Unfortunately, in spite of highly sort of remarkable things there, but caste system. And low caste, people come from low caste, they always you see uh, less privileged and a bully. And they are emotionally the inferior feeling. This is very bad. We have to change that. Even maybe part of Indian tradition must change. Outdated sort of certain tradition. We have to change. 
I think the caste system, mainly, I think, uh, created by landlord. And the dad feudal system, I think, maybe influence some of these religious sort of Harsita because of the tradition. So the landlord, upper class, so they have a certain right, and also due to karma, they have the position to explore poor people. Poor people, due to their karma or creator, they uh, remain like that. So that psychological sort of thinking is very harmful uh, to, also, to become equal. So in any way, uh, in any way, is the uh, altruism is the key factor uh, our happiness, our healthy life, happy life, healthy body, healthy family, uh, healthy society, and finally, healthy uh, humanity. So I always consider myself one of the seven billion human beings. I never consider I'm Dalai Lama. If I stress I'm His Holiness, 14th Dalai Lama, <laughs> then that mental thinking, I actually isolated from the rest of the community. Among seven billion human beings, only one Dalai Lama. If I emphasis on that, then mentally, emotionally, I feel lonely person. When I think I'm human being, rest of seven million human beings, my brother, sisters, then I feel, <laughs> you see, I have plenty of brother, sisters. I, when I visit this place, oh, I feel another human, brother, sisters. Go this, here, brother, sisters. And then more important, many problems which we created we, uh, this has a, has a, hmm, problem, we emphasis on secondary level of differences, including religion and race and family background, rich and poor, these things. So therefore, a uh, lot of man-made problem. Uh, the only way to reduce that, we should emphasis we are the same human being. Uh, they want happy life. I want happy life. My happy life depends on their happiness. If surrounding your, because of the, your, your family or yourself, angry family, no, no happiness. You surrounded by friendly, compassionate uh, neighbors and member of your own family, you feel much happier. Even dogs, cats, this is who really showing you love. They have no sort of language, but the uh, dogs, you see, they do, you see, they have their nail gaza, tail survey, tail. And sometimes you see licking. Yeah. You feel happy. Dog showing you, oh, you don't like. Isn't it? Even animal which showing you love, you feel happy. Uh, showing you anger, uh, you feel more uh, anxiety. That's nature. Whether true or not, once I heard uh, one Russian scientist, see, two plot of flower, one flower each day, uh, that, that person, the scientist, praising something nice word. The, another flower, scold, scold. Then the growth of the uh, flower, which receives nice word, grow better. I don't know. Uh, uh, that, that's I really don't know. But I heard that. 
So in any way, in a human being or sentient being who have the feeling of so the uh, uh, experiences, then certainly the loving kindness, immense help. Oh, negative emotion, very harmful. So we are not talking about next life. We are not talking heaven. I am Buddhist. Buddha himself, you see, told us, you are your own master. Everything, your future, it depends on yourself. So now these, uh, they are still thinking, come from India. These are part of ancient Indian wisdom, Indian experience. Eighth century, Tibetan emperor, Chisung Dezen, he invited one great master of Nalanda, Shandarakshita. He was from Bangladesh, I think from Bengali. The same sort of was family lineage, that of Atishanti Vankara. So eighth century, Shandarakshita invited to Tibet. Then his age already over 70 years old, but he accepted. And he introduced Buddha Dharma in Tibet according to Nalanda tradition. So, our great teacher, uh, Shantarakshita, wonderful. Then also I may say, student, a Tibetan student of Shantarakshita, also I think great. <laughs> I usually describe, you Indian, historically our guru, so we are chela. Uh, but at the same time, we not only just a chela, but quite reliable chela. <laughs> so we kept over a thousand years all this knowledge intact. Uh, the Guru's own land, you neglected this knowledge. So now, today, as far as the knowledge is concerned, Chela knowledge is better than Guru. <laughs> so now, I really very, very happy, encouraged, more and more Indian, now showing the interest about your ancient knowledge. This knowledge, not only ancient one, but also very relevant to today's world. And today, I think there is a lot of crisis. I think those crises, including violence, ultimately started from here. Lack of fuller knowledge about the system of our emotion. So Western, last 30 years, I have uh, a series of discussions with scientists. So then I notice, as far as knowledge about emotion, about mind is concerned, Western psychology looks like a kindergarten level. India's ancient knowledge about these things are highly developed. So now these things, uh, when world facing some kind of moral crisis of violence, I think ancient Indian knowledge is very useful, very relevant. So you have to pay more attention, not only talking about material development and money, uh, like that, I think we need material development, it's very important. Millions of Indians still remain poor. So India's economic development is very essential. And also India, I think now, one of the important sort of country, the economically also. So we further develop, need further development. At the same time, the ancient Indian knowledge that provide us inner peace, not through prayer, but through understanding about emotional system, which emotion 
is bring healthy body, happy family, happy individual. Which emotion is destructive? Once we realize these things, and then also you see the method tackle this emotion. That is part of ancient Indian sort of kasoda knowledge. So wherever I go, I always discover myself as a messenger of ancient Indian uh, thought, Indian knowledge. Then firstly, I always see talking secular ethics. That also ancient Indian sort of. Uh, even today, secular, your constitution itself based on secular. So, whenever I talk about a secular value, secular ethics, that's India's sort of message. Then, ahimsa. Uh, ahimsa, not, not you see, due to kasoda, fear, and not harming other. That is not ahimsa. Ahimsa is you have the ability to harm other, yet restrain harming other. That is violence. No, that is kasati, the ahimsa. So ahimsa very much related with karuna. Karuna there, ahimsa come. So wherever I go, I always talking about uh, ahimsa and karuna. That also India's. Uh, uh, India's tradition. Then, also, you say, I uh, fully committed about the promotion of religious harmony. That also India's tradition. In this country, beside the homegrown religion, all major world religions eventually is settled in this country very harmoniously. Occasionally, if you problem here and there. That is understandable. Around a billion human beings, there must be some mischievous human being. <laughs> so some problem. Uh, that's understandable. Overall picture, I think this country, I think really, I think only India can be example where all major world religious traditions live together. <laughs> Wonderful. So all this ancient Indian sort of Kasoda, a tradition. So I consider I'm messenger of ancient Indian uh, thought or Indian knowledge. So therefore, now over 58 years, I remain guest of Indian government. So longest guest of Indian government. So I'm paying back. You see, carrying ancient Indian sort of thought wherever I go. Okay. So, so th thank you very much. I really appreciate you welcome me or invite me and give a talk. So these things, you see, not prepared, always here. My part of my own practice. So, uh, I, I extremely happy to share some of these sort of my sort of experience to you, originally come from India, uh, like that. So thank you very much, all the concerned or say the Kasoda people or Kasoda organization. organization. I really appreciate, and also the Kasa, the translation, no, my uh, and my people, no, in local language. Yeah. I really appreciate. Thank you very much. Then I want to ask the media. How much difference is my face?
So now, this side. Oh, don't stand up. This is hair, less and less. So black hair and white hair. <laughs> less and less hair, like that. Thank you very much. Thank you. His Holiness, we humble beings extend a heartfelt gratitude to you for blessing us with your presence and enlightening us with your wisdom. Tuje Shitache. Ladies and gentlemen, we now have a very short question and answer session. We really do understand that this is an opportunity of a lifetime for everyone to interact with a personality as His Holiness, one-to-one, -one. but constraints of time allows us to be very brief. Our official, Dr. Rita Moni Bordoloi from the KK Handic State Open University, uh, will choose a person from amongst the audience from the raised hands, and uh, that person will put the question to His Holiness. Questions, please. Your Holiness, I am Judith Goswami from National Law University and Judicial Academy of Assam. Your Holiness, since your arrival, India is experiencing the greatness of another propagator of peace, truth, and nonviolence after Mahatma Gandhi. Your Holiness, are you optimistic towards the achievement? of a non-violent and peaceful world. Basically, I'm optimistic. Judging even in the 20th century, I think humanity is thinking in early part of the 20th century and later part of the 20th century, big differences, particularly in Europe. Uh, and then, I think now peace is more good. I think everywhere. As for example, the Iraq crisis, they all go ahead. They from Australia up to university, uh, up to the United States. They said millions of people come out against violence. Uh, and then Then, uh, oh, oh, oh. then the basic human nature, now some scientists say, basic human nature is more compassionate. That's a really hopeful sign. Uh, through education, through awareness. Uh, and then, I think, I think present generation, everywhere, come through education is such, not much talking about inner value or about mind. When talk, when the point comes about peace or non-violence and compassion, we often rely on religion. Of course, I'm a religious person. I'm a Buddhist man. But the re the realistically speaking, I think over uh, almost now this country, 3,000 years, the religion has come. But I think of failed to bring happy <laughs> That's correct. That's reality. So I often is telling, if Buddha, Jesus Christ, Muhammad, and some other religious leaders come, if they have the opportunity to meet, uh, see him, and if you, if we appeal to them, please bring peace. Then, most probably, they say, who creates violence? Not God, not Jesus Christ, not Buddha, or Mahavira. But, in spite of their teaching, we human beings create this violence. So, you have to solve. You have the responsibility to solve this problem. I think most of the Buddha come, Buddha name will say that. So therefore, now, uh, just pray to God about Buddha, Buddha, Buddha. No, now, we must work hard. 
Ja, ja, ich wusste, ich bin zu technisch. Ich bin zu In order to build up enthusiasm, determination, work for peace, to awareness, to conviction. That brings to education, to awareness, self-centered attitude to that. So the best way to fulfill your own interests is peace, not violence. So therefore, I'm optimistic. However, I think within, within my lifetime, I don't know whether you see uh, some big change on this planet. But if we start work now through education, in a way, uh, then I think next generations who come to that kind of education, uh, then uh, there is a real possibility uh, to create better world, peaceful world, compassionate world. Okay, that's why. Next question. Yes, uh, Ritimani, can we have the next question? And whoever would ask the question, please stand there and ask from there itself. Okay, let's not waste time. Ms. Holiness, I am Gunjan Sharma. It's like a dream for me and for all of us out here, I guess, to finally see you and listen to your enlightened words. Ms. Holiness, do you think that spirituality? could lead towards peace and happiness, both in terms of moral and material well-being of the people. Yes, in you, personally, I think as I said earlier, secular ethics. Uh, one of my book, Beyond Religion, that's maybe, you see, ethics, not based on religion, but based on awareness for your own interest, interest for humanity, interest for family. Deeper awareness about that, then, you see, uh, try to reduce anger uh, and develop That is secular. Then, on the basis of that, actually, all the religions, religion of human beings, not our enemy, of God or goddess, that mysterious thing. <laughs> so, therefore, all religions, you see, their aim is. Uh, try to promote human value, that's human compassion, and use different concepts, different philosophies. Like some of the theories which say God. When they describe God, infinite love. Nobody says God full of anger. No. God, according to theories which is our Father, Father, if it is enough. Then non the religion, uh, essence of their teaching is karma. Jainism, Buddhism, these two are major sort of traditions which no concept of creator, self-creation. So all these traditions have the same message, message of love, Forgiveness, tolerance, contentment, self-esteem. So anyone wants to accept religion, he should be sincere, should be serious. Then all religious traditions have the same potential to produce compassionate forces. And philosophy can be basic differences. But then you must look what's the purpose of this different philosophy. The same purpose to strengthen human value as compassion. Like that. If you look at the differences, then within Buddhism, philosophy will be different.
is different. Many is a different school of thought. Vivashya school of thought. Swatantik school of thought. Chidda Mantra school of thought. Majinja school of thought. There are differences. So when we study Lada Baba Begas uh, the book, when we study that, then we can see the uh, different school of thought. You see the uh, one sort of view or concept, conception, even the concept of this particular sort of, uh, school of thought. The another school of thought uh, sort of argument. Uh, yours sort of, your sort of con concept, there is contradiction. So therefore, Buddha himself is telling his follower, all my follower, bhikshus, uh, bhikshunis, scholars, should not accept my teachings out of faith, out of devotion, but rather thorough investigation and experiment. It's a very scientific thing. No? And also, you see, uh, in a way, you see, in Buddha's teaching, so, you see, the different audience who have different mental disposition. So, Buddha, compassion is so Buddha, so, he taught according to their mental disposition. So, Buddha indirectly accepted among his teaching, there are some contradictions. So, the, so therefore, you must investigate. Not just faith. Isn't it? Uh, so, that's the reason. Uh, otherwise, sometimes I do really tell you, you see, people, the Buddha is in one location, one place, taught some different philosophy, and another sort of occasion, different philosophy. This does not mean Buddha's own mind not very clear. <laughs> Buddha himself is a little bit sort of confused. No, not that. Buddha enlightened. No, Buddha deliberately tried to create more confusion among his followers. No, Buddha is compassionate. Therefore, uh, Buddha is he taught different philosophy according to different mental dispositions. So this is we learn all now. World need different religious traditions. So like that. Okay, can we have the next question please? Next question? I mentioned earlier, all different uh, spiritual traditions, religious traditions, it's the same potential to bring inner peace. With different methods, most, most of the different religions, you see, use faith in order to bring inner peace or compassion. Uh, non religious religion, you see, use investigation. And experiment. All tertiary religions, non tertiary religions, all aiming, you see, how to strengthen, how to promote the deeper human value. That's in the compassion. Okay. His Holiness, we have a question from the translator herself. She's been wanting to ask you a question. Your Holiness, I have just one simple question. Like if one has to choose between his religion and country, who do you think one ha has to choose? If one has to choose between his country and religion, who do you think one has to opt for? Between religion and his country? Well, I think a different level. I think a basic level. 
Your country is also part of the humanity. Uh, we have to think see, about humanity. Uh, within that, your own country, uh, see, emotionally, you have some special responsibility. But each individual country's future depends on the world. India's future depends on the world. Depend on Asia, depend on the world. So, there's no, no, no contradiction. If India is a complete isolated from the rest of the world, then you can talk only India, 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 India. That's, that's not the case. India is part of the world, part of Asia, and part of the world. So, in future of India, Future of China, future of Russia, future of America, and all these big nations, you see, they are futures. Very much different on humanity. Humanity is happy, more compassionate humanity. And all these nations also you see get much better. That's my point of view. My lord, my name is Ravi Ajit uh, As you have said, Yesterday, I say it's a prayer, not religion, but education. Now, I repeat my question. Prayer, not religion, but only education. What do you mean by that? I think I already mentioned it. Yeah. I can look during the Second World War, First World War, each nation, mostly Christians, they pray to God. And now today, among the Muslims, or among the Christians and Muslims, some sort of uh, conflict comes. And the regions of, uh, in, in Northern Ireland, uh, Protestant and Catholic, some sort of conflict. I think both pray to Jesus Christ, Trinity, God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It's a both pray. Nothing happened. <laughs> I think then, you see now, Muslim, Shia, Sunni, both pray to Allah. Uh, I think sometimes it seems that God uh, himself is confused. Uh, this was, this was less than two people, this side to all, or that side. Different. Both pray to God. And then we need to uh, say, when we're facing some problems, we say, I think a lot of puja we done. Nothing happened. <laughs> so therefore, uh, realistically speaking, Frankly speaking, you see, future of humanity depends on humanity themselves, not on God. <laughs> of course, in my daily practice, I pray to Buddha, the Dharma, Sangha. My own individual problem has a development about inner value, prayer. Very useful. But pray to humanity, I doubt. 